Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak with an update to my skin on frame coloring video focused on some exciting new options that we have for coloring with rare earth pigments. Now, in the previous version of this video, I gave you a really comprehensive overview of the advantages and disadvantages of the two different systems that I commonly use to color skin boats, acid dye versus rare earth pigment. And just to give you a really quick review of that, the advantages to going with acid dye is that it comes in a wide variety of colors. The colors are very rich and saturated, and also the color results are very predictable. But the downside of going with acid dye is that the colors tend to fade over time, and also it is not compatible with polyester or very tightly woven nylons. Now, the other system that I've been using more and more recently is mixing rare earth pigment directly into the two-part polyurethane. And the advantage of going with rare earth pigment is that the colors are much more color fast than acid dye, which means that your boat is gonna look better for longer. And also there are colors available that just don't work in acid dye, specifically blacks and reds. But the downsides of rare earth pigment, at least the way I described it in the last video, is that it doesn't come in as wide a variety of colors, and also the color results can be less predictable. Also, if you're not applying this stuff really carefully, sometimes you can end up with an uneven looking color, especially in the darker color saturations. Now, of those three things, I still think that the application of rare earth pigment in the darker colors is a little bit trickier than acid dye, although if you follow our coating instructions carefully, this shouldn't be a problem for you. But the first few issues I suspected was just because we weren't trying a wide enough variety of pigments. So what I've been doing over the last couple months is just contacting different earth pigment suppliers and learning more about working with earth pigments in general. And then I ordered a bunch of different colors that I wanted to try. And we just did a massive test of applying 20 different earth pigments to the exact same fabric that we use on our skin boats with the same polyurethane and the same application method. And we did this for a couple different reasons. The first one is to make sure that all the pigments are actually compatible with the two-part polyurethane because even though earth pigments are supposed to be inert, I have seen issues with chemical compatibility in the past. Also, I want to determine the maximum safe amount that we could add to the polyurethane without disturbing the chemistry of the two-part system. And then finally, I just wanted to build a predictable color library. That way, people don't have to take the risk of ending up with a boat that isn't the color that they wanted. So why don't we come in on this color panel here? I'm just gonna give you some of my impressions from this test really quickly. All right, so before we take a look at all the colors, I just wanted to zoom in on a couple patches here and mention a few things. The first one is that if you notice any splotchiness or any unevenness on these color patches, that's just because I had to cut a few corners in the application process, otherwise it would have taken way too long. Basically, when I do this for real, I usually mix the pigment into the two-part polyurethane the night before I coat a boat, and then I mix it up again the next day before I put it on the boat to get really even color dispersion. And I also roll this on in four thinner coats, whereas in these tests, I just mix it up once and put it on in two thicker coats. So basically what I'm saying here is that these are not quite as even as they could be, although this is a good example because this shows you some of the uneven effects you can get if you aren't rolling this on perfectly. And even though this isn't a perfect test, I still think most of these colors are totally acceptable. Now, the other thing to pay attention to is that you wanna be looking at the color not how dark it is, because we standardize each one of these patches with the same amount of pigment for the same amount of polyurethane, which is the most pigment that we recommend putting in the two-part polyurethane. And what that means is that if you see one of these colors that you like the color, but it's darker than you want it to be, all you have to do is put less pigment into the two-part polyurethane. So pay attention to the color, not necessarily how dark it is. And Finally, the camera that I'm using right now just does not render color very well. So in the website, we're gonna do our best to get the most accurate possible color rendition. Although how your monitor is set and how you personally view color is gonna change that as well. We just try to do the best we can. So starting out with our first eight colors here, all these colors are gonna be either an ochre-based or an oxide-based pigment. The difference is that oxide-based pigments tend to be a lot more rich and vibrant and they have darker tinting strength, whereas ochre-based colors tend to look a lot more natural and they don't have quite a dark of tinting strength, although there are exceptions. 
Also, you can see mostly I've got earth tones here just because earth tones tend to work a little bit better with the natural yellowing effect of the two-part polyurethane, although we did experiment with some cool colors, which I'm going to show you at the end. Now, starting out up in the corner here, we've got a couple different red iron oxides. This one is a little bit cooler. This is probably what I would go with if I wanted a true red, just because the yellowing is going to warm this up over time. Generally speaking with reds, you want to put a lot of it into the mix so you don't risk your boat turning pink. However, both of these have such strong tint strength that I would probably back off a little bit even if I wanted a really red boat. Now, this one here is interesting because this is not an oxide-based red, but it is still very red and not nearly as cool or pink looking as some of the other natural reds that I've seen. This burnt sienna here, I'm really excited about because it is more true to the burnt sienna color than any of the other burnt siennas that I've tried in the past, which tend to be a little bit lighter and a little bit pink looking. Down here, we've got a yellow iron oxide pigment. This one actually has a little bit of black flakes in it, even though you can't see it from there. And this looks a little bit more orange just because of how much pigment we put in the mix. So if you wanted this to look a little bit more yellow, you would just put less pigment in. And then we've got a couple different yellow ochre based pigments here, which just have more of a natural straw color. Although as these get exposed to sunlight, they are going to warm up a little bit and they're going to darken significantly. So if you wanted something to look like this in the end, you'd probably want to put it on lighter in the beginning. Now, finally, we've got this other yellow ochre down here, which really surprised me because this almost has the vibrancy and the tint strength of an oxide based pigment. And this to me looks a lot like the gold ochre acid dye that I really like. So I'm probably going to put this on one of my own personal skin boats here pretty soon. All right, now moving on to our next eight colors. Up here, we've got this brown iron oxide, really nice warm brown with a really deep tinting strength. We've got this burnt umber here, which I'm also really happy with just because it's a lot more true to the burnt umber color than some of the burnt umbers I've used in the past. Over here, we've got a cypress umber, which is a little bit warmer than the cypress umbers that I've used in the past. And then up here, we've got another dark brown oxide-based pigment. This one's a lot cooler than this iron oxide over here. Uh, down in this corner, this particular pigment was called an amber dunkel. I'm not going to talk about this just because I think this is a crappy color. I'm going to have it on the website, but I don't think many people are going to choose it. Uh, this apricot ochre here is really nice, uh, nice and rich, a little bit salmon colored. Not my personal favorite color, but if you're into that, this is a nice color. Over here, we've got this natural sienna, which is almost a non-color. In the lighter dilutions, it almost looks like parchment paper on a boat. So I tell people that if you want to add a little bit of color to your boat, but you're not looking for a colorful boat, the natural sienna is a good way to get that. And then finally, we've got this really super intense orange right here. And this is a little bit too bright for me personally. I wouldn't put this on my own boat unless I had some serious safety concerns on the water. But what I realized while I was putting this on, when I did the first layer and it was at about 50% tint strength, is that this is almost an exact match for the Aztec gold dye that I really like in our acid dyes. And so if you like that particular color, a lighter dilution of this orange would be a good way to get it. And if you want to knock it down a little bit, you can always add a little bit of brown or a little bit of red the same way that I do with the acid dyes. And finally, for our last four colors, we have a raw umber, a black, a blue, and a green. Now, this raw umber is a little bit cooler than any of the other browns that I chose. It's almost leaning a little bit towards an olive color. This black was actually an experiment to see if I could put this pigment in full strength without having a chemistry issue with the coating, because I have seen both black acid dye and black pigments cause the polyurethane to foam up, which is not a great thing to have happen on your boat. But at least with this particular pigment, it looks like this is a safe black to put in in full concentration, which means that if you want a jet black kayak, you can do that. If you, but keep in mind that if you're in a very hot, sunny place, this is going to be extremely hot to paddle in. Now, down here with this green, this green is a little bit brighter than I personally wish it was. But if you like this color, then this is how you can do that. Uh, you can always, however, add a little bit of black to any of these colors just to make them a little bit darker. 
Same thing goes with this blue here. This was not my first choice in a blue. I wanted to show you guys a cobalt blue, but there was a supply shortage, so I just chose this other random blue, which is a little bit lighter than I want it to be. Personally, I would probably knock this down with a little bit of black. Now, one final very important caveat about any blue or green or any other cool color is that the yellowing of the two-part polyurethane is gonna be much more visible as your boat ages with a cool color than it is with a warmer earth tone. All right, so I talked for a little bit longer than I meant to about the individual colors here, but hopefully this gives you a pretty good idea of everything that we tested this time around. And like I said before, if you wanna zoom in on each of these colors and really look at them, check out the separate color page that we just put up on the site. Now, my general impression from this test is that it's pushing me personally more and more towards using rare earth pigments exclusively on my own skin boats, just because even though they are a little bit trickier to apply evenly in the darker colors, they do have much better color fastness, and now we have a color variety and a color reproducibility that is equivalent to, if not better, than our acid dye selection. Now, as far as what we're gonna carry in the store, as of right now, August of 2022, I'm going to have all of these colors up for sale. And then as we start to burn through the smaller sizes that I ordered, I'm gonna be reordering those in larger quantities and the less popular colors are probably gonna fall off of our color selection. Now, next step in the process here is we're gonna be doing the same type of UV testing that we did with the acid dye. I'm going to be covering one half of each of these swatches and then we're gonna expose them to a thousand hours of direct sunlight. And then sometime around the middle of 2023, you're gonna be able to come back to that same color page on the website, see what colors these were initially versus what color they turned with exposure to sunlight so you can make an even more informed color decision. Now, it's really important to mention here that just like any color or coating system, how you apply this stuff has a huge impact on the overall results. And so for that reason, I have super detailed application instructions in my Skin on Frame Canoe Building course and my Skin on Frame Kayak Building course. And pretty soon here, we're gonna actually break out those instructions into a separate mini course for sale on the website. That way, if you're building a skin boat, but it's not one of ours, you can still take advantage of those instructions. So what you hope for with your color is what you actually end up with. Now, final thing I wanna mention here is that this was a very expensive test. It took three of us eight hours to get this done, and we burned through about $600 of kayak building supplies in the process. So if you wanna support the work that we're doing here and you benefit from these videos, think about picking up any of those courses that I just mentioned. You can also purchase these pigments directly from us through our store, as well as other kayak building supplies and paddling gear. And finally, I'm also going to put up a donate button on the website pretty soon. So if you want to, you can support us that way as well. So I think that's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Also think about clicking that notification bell. That way, every time we release a new video, it'll show up in your feed. You can also find us on our website, capefalconkayaks.com, where I've got skin on frame building video courses, plan sets, and various free skin on frame resources. You can find us on Instagram, at Cape Falcon Builds, where we post a daily build blog of everything we're working on here in the shop. And just like I say every time, even if you're not normally a social media person, I would really encourage you to check out the Instagram feed because there is so much more great content there than ever makes it here on the YouTube channel. So that's it for now. Take care, be safe on the water, and have fun building your skin boat.